Sponsored by Eero. Get $100 off the Eero package and one year of Eero Plus, link in the description. When does a team dedicated to ferreting out bugs, exploits, and vulnerabilities turn into its own form of malware attack? For Google's Project Zero, the answer just may have been this week. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is Vector. Project Zero is the name for Google's team of security researchers tasked with tracking down and reporting zero-day vulnerabilities in operating systems, websites, and apps. Zero-day as in they've not previously been disclosed, and so have yet to be fixed. On Thursday, August 29th, 2019, Project Zero blogged a very deep dive into just that, a chain of zero-day vulnerabilities that they said were being used by a small collection of hacked websites as an indiscriminate watering hole attack against iPhone users. Here's what they said. There was no target discrimination. Simply visiting the hack site was enough for the exploit server to attack your device. And if it was successful, install a monitoring implant. We estimate that these sites receive thousands of visitors per week. Back on February 1st, 2019, they'd given Apple a seven day deadline to fix the 14 vulnerabilities across five exploit chains because that's how PZ rolls. And Apple did just that. The iOS 12.1.4 patch was released on February 7th, 2019. So last week's blog post wasn't about disclosure anymore. It was about a deep dive and it was legit amazing. Project Zero went into excruciating detail about the exploit chains found in the wild, except in two critical, crucial areas. The websites involved in the attacks and any other operating systems that were subject to the attacks. Why that's so critical, so crucial is simple. Facts shape coverage, but so does the absence of facts. Like I tweeted immediately after the blog post surfaced, if it was a tiny cluster of sites in a remote region versus major multinational sites like Amazon or YouTube, that's a vastly different threat level to address. Likewise, if it was only iOS, that's a vastly different narrative than if it was also targeting Android and Windows as well. And yeah, we saw the results of Project Zero's write-up immediately with reblog after reblog covering it as an iPhone-only story that everyone in the world with an iPhone needed to worry about, if not outright panic over. I knew it was just a matter of time before my parents saw the story on the CBC or BBC or some other mainstream media outlet and became concerned enough about it to call me. That took less than 24 hours. I was tempted to throw out a video fast, pointing out that missing context and saying something didn't smell right, but I didn't want to add to the noise. So I started asking around to see if I could find out some signal instead. But it was only in the last couple of days that the story started to become clearer. First, Zach Whitaker on TechCrunch found out that it was China that was using the iPhone hacks to target the Uyghurs Muslims in the Xinjiang region. According to Whitaker, it's part of the latest efforts by the Chinese government to crack down on the minority Muslim community in recent history. In the past year, Beijing has detained more than a million Uyghurs in internment camps, according to a United Nations Human Rights Committee. Thomas Brewster at Forbes, actual Forbes, not the hot mess that is Forbes Contributor Network, actual Forbes, confirmed and expanded on the TechCrunch report, adding that Android and Windows users were also targeted, not just iPhone and iOS. According to Brewster, that Android and Windows were targeted is a sign that the hacks were part of a broad, two-year effort that went beyond Apple phones and infected many more than first suspected. TechCrunch added, that suggests the campaign targeting the Uyghurs was far broader in scope than Google initially disclosed. Yeah. And that's a huge, huge problem. As I and many other people have said repeatedly, code is so complex that there will be bugs and there will be exploits and all that can be done about them is ethical disclosure by researchers, fast fixes by companies and responsible reporting by not just the media, but everyone involved. Project Zero, by virtue of being owned and operated by Google, which operates two of the major software platforms with Chrome OS and Android OS, has an additional hurdle to overcome here. They need to go out of their way to report on Google, demonstrably, above reproach as they say. 
What they did here was the opposite of that, worse. They didn't even just underreport on Google, they absolutely failed to report on Google. You could go so far as to call it lies of omission. And Google, for their part, have done and said nothing to address it yet, nothing. From TechCrunch, a Google spokesperson would not comment beyond the published research. Forbes, neither Microsoft nor Google had provided comment at the time of publication. It's unclear if Google knew or disclosed that the sites were also targeting other operating systems. Now, people are gonna ascribe some sinister conspiracy motives to this, and Google has left themselves wide open to it because they compete with Apple on operating systems and phones, and both have big launches this fall. Now, it's tough to imagine Project Zero wanting to be any part of anything like that, or Google, frankly, having enough coordination between teams to pull off something like that. So I'm gonna leave it for now with the internet conspiracy theorists. But again, Google should be going out of their way never to leave themselves open to any suspicions, anything like that. What I think is Project Zero is composed of a bunch of nerds who just wanna write about cool exploit chains they find in the wild. And this is cool. iOS is uniquely hard to break into. This one took 14 vulnerabilities over five exploit chains. It's the exciting thing to talk about, but by effectively leaving out so much of the rest of the story, Project Zero shaped the story and they shaped it wrong. iOS is by no means the most popular operating system in the world, but wow, is it the most popular headline? And that's what we got. Headline after completely distorted headline, story after incomplete story. It just got so much attention, which I think is exactly what Project Zero wants but it shouldn't be about attention. It should be about reputation. Project Zero are superheroes, no doubt, proven many times over, but they should wanna be the Justice League, not the boys. They should aim to stamp out exploits, not become part of a social engineering attack against iPhone users. And that's what happened with this story. A lot of iPhone owners were made to be afraid beyond what the actual threat level warranted, all because the original blog post by Project Zero lacked the context it absolutely should have had to begin with. It also delayed the start of a much more important conversation. While people were worrying or gloating over iOS security, they weren't considering the existence of these types of attacks in general and how they're being used, not just for national security, but to target individuals, minorities, communities. Burn all the zero days indeed. Now, I'm not an InfoSec expert, not by any means, and if you're not either, check out Eero. Yes, it's a tri-band mesh router, but with Eero Plus, it's also way more than that. You get total network protection and advanced security to keep you safe from malicious sites, content and ad blocking, so you don't get anything you don't want and never run any slower than you should. Also, VPN protection from encrypt.me, password management from 1Password, and antivirus software from Malwarebytes. As easy as Eero is to set up, it's not the first day that matters. It's every day from that point on. And that's where Eero Plus has you covered. And right now, you can get $100 off the Eero base unit and two beacons package and one year of Eero Plus by going to eero.com slash vector and using promo code vector at checkout. Thanks Eero and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Now, I'm handing all of this off to you. You've seen everything that Project Zero has reported. You've seen everything that TechCrunch and Forbes have reported. So hit like if you do, hit subscribe if you haven't already, InfoSec lock down that bell gizmo so you don't miss the next video, and then hit up the comments and let me know. Thank you so much for watching and see you next video.